Coverage for this year's Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest is brought to you by Fabrico. For printer parts, kits, accessories, and more, check them out in the link in the description. This is the weirdest V0 I've ever seen. Brandon, what did you do to this thing? What are we looking at? We added some more axes to it. We added two axes to a Voron Zero. So this is a V0, and you've made it a five axis 3D printer now. So, so what, what did you have to do to take a normal V0? What, what have you changed here? So we had to add some stuff. Obviously we were adding some axes. So we added the B axis here and the C axis, this gantry in the middle. In order to make that fit, we had to add a second Z lead screw and push them to the sides so there was room for steppers in the middle. Okay, so now the bed, it will spin and it will also pivot, right? Yep. Is that how it works? Okay. And what have you changed on the tool head? Because it's got some machining here. This so we is got a Orbiter 2. We've got the Revo Voron um, heat sink on there. And this is just a custom piece of aluminum that is holding those two pieces together. At the bottom of that, we've got one of the plated copper blocks from E3D and a non-planar .xyz nozzle. It's okay. just basically a really long brass nozzle. And that's basically just for clearance because you're printing yep. in five axes. Yep, so if you, if you look down, when this is gonna rotate, you gotta make sure that this axis here doesn't bump into that plastic. The extra long nozzle gets you past that. Awesome, and, and what's powering all this? So right now, it's currently running off of just a 24 volt DC supply. Okay. But it turns out, if you get a USB-C PD decoy and you get a 20 volt variety and you have a 100 watt uh, USB-C power supply, you can actually run this from a USB-C power supply. There's no heated bed in this, right? Nope, there's no heated bed. So all we're dealing with is the nozzle and the seven steppers. Okay, and what controller are you running in here? We have a Duet Mini 5 3 Plus. Oh, Duet Mini 5 Plus. Awesome. And this has a daughter board on it that gives it control for two more steppers. So the big thing here, and w so we, we, we've seen five axis and, and non-planner. The issue is always gonna be slicing. So how are you generating the G-code to make this do this? How, how is that done? All right, well, right now on this, we just sliced it in Prusa Slicer. We took your standard Benchy, I offset it. You know, you can see it's a little bit to the right of the center, and I manually edited the code. So I stuck the triangle base, and I stuck all the Benchy code together, ran press print. Uh, Fullcontrol.xyz is a Python library that you can either install or run on the cloud, and that allows you to put in the tool paths, and then that will output G-code for you. So it takes care of all of the math you know, for the extrusion rate and things like that. Okay, so unfortunately it's not as simple as loading a bunch of stuff in, Prusa Slicer and hand slice and go. And I think that we're gonna be years from that, but I don't think that that's really an issue. I think that there's a lot of kind of maturity that has to happen with a system like this, and it's just, um, you know, I think bespoke applications are gonna be what we see first. Okay, awesome. So it's cool though that you could just, you know, the joys of open source is you could just take an existing design like the V0 and just turn it into a five axis because why not? Yeah, so now you can just go to the Open5x repository. You can download all of these files, all of the system calibration files are there, the configuration, the macros, everything is just up on GitHub, it's already there. It's right next to, the, there's a tool changer implementation, we've got the Voron implementation, and there's a Prusa implementation as well. Awesome. What am I looking at here? This is Prex-Z. It is a cantilevered polar Corex-Z printer. <laughs> okay, so... Actually, sorry, it's a switch wire. It's, so technically this is a switch wire. It's a, it's this is switch same wire belt 614. Path, same belt path, but it's missing one of the verticals, right? Yep, uh, and it is serialized as a switch wire right now. It's switch wire 614. Really? Sanity, we got Sanity drunk enough last night to do it. Um, <laughs> So why does this printer exist? Uh, why shouldn't it exist? <laughs> it, uh, we wanted to do it, so we did. Um, the real answer is that it can move, uh, you only need half, half of the bed for travel. Uh, because the bed spins, you only have to move it across half, the radius of the bed, rather. Um, so it's the smallest amount of hardware for the most amount of build volume. Uh, I want to build a smaller one, because make the tiniest ant printer ever. Um, it does vase mode prints really, really well, because the X arm barely has to move. Uh, the bed just does all the work. Um, and it's cool. So this bed is heated. This is a heated bed. Yep, so how, how are you getting heat to, power to it? So it's a four-wire slip ring. Uh, 
two thermistor wires, two uh, DC bed wires. We actually blew it out in testing. We were spinning the bed around 600 RPM. We might be able to save you. Nope. And that, I think, flat spotted the thermistor brush in the, in the slip ring we had. So we, we next did one from Amazon and installed it last night. We're printing again. Awesome. And so the frame, there's really nothing out of the, the only thing that's really odd is this like base plate here, but everything else looks like normal off the shelf stuff you yep. would find on like a Vora. Uh, yeah, so these base plates are laser cut. Technically we laser cut the bed um, and we laser cut this, we call it Mall Ninja under here, which is our bed support. Uh, the bed could be just your average 200 diameter bed. Uh, so bed plate and Mall Ninja basically are the, the custom, custom cuts things. So what do you have to do to make Clipper so this is running Clipper. It's running Clipper. Normal Clipper doesn't do this. What, what did you have to do to make this work? A lot. A lot. Uh, there's a couple firmware things we have to do. That's an the biggest thing is that uh, if you think about the bed spinning, if the bed spins at a set, at a set velocity and you move, it, it's, the nozzle speed is one thing at the edge of the bed and one thing at the center of the bed. It scales as you get closer to, uh, the rate, uh, as you get closer to origin. So we had to basically scale the moves. But the issue is that in Clipper, a move is at one given velocity, not a lot of velocities. Um, so we have to segment the move into a bunch of tiny moves and then scale the velocity based on that. And in addition to keeping the velocity consistent, we need to respect the maximum velocity and acceleration of the bed stepper. Otherwise, we're going to completely skip steps all the time. So we actually have to have separate acceleration limits for the bed and for the X and Z. Yeah, and it spins, yeah, like you can see, it gets pretty fast. It spins a lot. Middle. We have a couple bugs still, which is this, uh, well, I guess the positive on this is actually it just changing, uh, changing rings. But there's a couple bugs still. We have uh, uh, the force move, not that that's super necessary, is a little bit buggy. Uh, it takes a while to, to clear. Um, homing works uh, with a hack. We're trying to home double the distance um, because if we were to home the full diameter for some reason, the timings get screwed up and crash. It's all small stuff, really. Um, the biggest issue, uh, and it's not really, I guess not a clipper specific issue, but aligning it is really, really hard. Uh, you have to have the nozzle exactly over the center of rotation, not the center of the bed, because the bed could be skewed. You have to have the nozzle directly over the center of rotation. And uh, in X, that's set in software by just saying, hey, what's our X max? But in Y, we actually have to, we have to shift this whole bed plate uh, below. And that is uh, hard to do. Basically what we do, I don't think we have them we don't have any sitting around, but we print little calibration keys that do two lines that cross near zero, and we compare them, and they should line up perfectly, and if they don't, we have to shift it until they do. We have a couple automated ideas in the pipeline, um, but right now, that's the best way to do it, and it works well enough. We can get it accurate enough that you won't see the misalignment because we're pushing hot glue. You know, it's a, it's a hot glue gun still, so. So is this a finished design? Is it still, is it almost there? Like, if. if if somebody's crazy enough and they, for whatever reason they wanted to build one, how do they go about it? Mr. Hardware, how do they go about it? Uh, you can build one. I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't say it's perfected. Uh, we still have a bunch of things we want to change. Uh, it, it is on the repo, Armchair Engineering, uh, P-Rex. Uh, you could build one. I, I, I don't know if I'd recommend it, but you could. <laughs> we, uh, the, biggest, the biggest hardware issue, the biggest hardware issue right now is that uh, the cantilever, you would imagine, would uh, cause it, the arm to dip down and, uh, like, droop. It's the opposite. The belt tension is forcing it upwards. Yeah, because so both belts we are have about, We have about two millimeters of variance uh, in, like, of tilt at the end of the arm, which is not the end of the world because we have a zero offset tongue that, on That's what the bed mesh is for. Exactly, exactly. But the bed mesh, uh, I can pull it up if you, wanna, if you want a picture of it. Uh, but we are working on it. We're working on it. Hardware Here's our bed mesh. That's actually better than I've seen it. Yep, it's only 1.7 now instead of two. So uh, that's the uh, the P-Rex. It, it is a thing. It, it does exist. Out of all the printers in the world, it is one of them. And uh, <laughs> it's coming soon to a DFH near you. If you're crazy.